This is the animation we're going to be making and this is the recreation. In the last episode of MoGraph Monday, we went ahead and recreated an animation originally made inside of After Effects, but did it inside of DaVinci. This episode is no different. Welcome to the second episode of MoGraph Monday. Very quickly here, my timeline resolution is at 1920 by 1080 at 24 frames per second. This video actually does involve some basic level of 3D. If you aren't unfamiliar with that, I actually did go ahead and make a full beginner's guide to 3D inside of DaVinci Resolve. So if I've explained anything that you're not familiar with, go ahead and watch that video and come back to this one. All right, I'm going to go ahead and open up another timeline and pull in a fusion clip and make this 7 seconds and 15 milliseconds. Okay, so now that we are inside of fusion here, for me, this is the clip I used. On the bottom here, it has the logo. So I'm going to go ahead and actually crop that out like so. We're going to start off by making the reveal, which you can do using a fast noise. I'm going to pull this into the second viewer. I'm going to scale this all the way up. Something like here will do. I'm going to go over into my color actually, and then I'm going to change this to gradient. And then I'm just going to bring these closer like so. And then I'm going to go back into noise. I'm going to bring the detail up to 4.17 and then the contrast to 2.4. Then going back into color, selecting our black here, I'm going to bring the alpha all the way down. And then going back into noise again, we're going to keyframe our brightness here. I'm going to go here into my timeline and I'm just going to place a keyframe here on brightness. And then going over here, I'm going to place another keyframe on brightness. And going back into our first keyframe, I'm going to bring the scale all the way down to minus two. Since there's still some showing, I'm going to bring this down just ever so slightly more. And then in our last keyframe here, I'm going to bring it so the white covers the whole entire screen. Something like 1.5 will do. There's still a little more, so I'm just going to bring that up. So then viewing our animation, we get this. Okay, so let's make it affect the mask input of our media here. I'm going to bring in a background here and just merge this on top. Viewing this, and then I'm going to decrease the alpha. So viewing our map here, it's 2000 by 2000. So going back into transform, I'm going to click auto resolution, type in 2000 there copy that and then paste it over. So then now our clip is the same size. So bringing in that fast noise we made, we can go ahead now and pipe this into our mask input. And again, we're going to go over into media, uncheck auto resolution and just paste our inputs there. So then when we go ahead and view our animation, we can see that our fast noise is affecting the mask input of our media. Okay, I'm actually going to go ahead and copy this here. So if I go ahead and paste our background here and then pipe this into our background, I'm going to increase the alpha and change this to white and then place this into our clip so the black lines are gone and it's all white i'm actually going to go ahead and do this again so i'm going to copy and then paste and change the color of our background then paste this hex code in here of this color blue and then i'm going to go ahead and merge that on top view the merge and now i'm going to copy and paste this fast noise here and then i'm actually going to pipe this in as well so this is the outcome of what we get we're going to make this a lot nicer by off placing the animation of our second fast noise here if i go ahead and view our second fast noise here i'm actually going to go ahead and select all of this holding alt and clicking and go ahead and drag this across I'm holding alt because it stops me from going vertically when I'm moving around our axis here. You can see my mouse is going up and down, but it's going left and right. I'm just going to set this back and just offset it a tiny bit. And then I'm just going to go ahead and view our first fast noise, check our second one. And then when we view both of them, we can see that it's, the animation here has been set off slightly later. I'm actually going to go ahead and isolate just this. And I'm going to go ahead and pull this back a little more. So then when we view, we go ahead and we have this, which is a lot more interesting to look at. I'm going to select our merge here, hitting shift space and typing in P image emitter, and then just going ahead and adding that into our scene like so. Viewing this P emitter, hitting shift space again, I'm going to type in P renderer and then viewing our P renderer, we get this. And basically what our P image emitter is doing is basically building up this image here with particles. And we're going to change the density. We're going to change it to 0.047. And then I'm going to just copy this and paste it in our second density. So then when zooming in into our timeline, we get this. I'm actually going to go ahead and increase the lifespan here so I don't have to do it later. I'm actually going to go ahead over into styling and change the style from point to bitmap. And then I'm going to go ahead and bring in a background here, adding an ellipse and changing it from black to white and then adding that into our P image emitter. Going into our P image emitter, I'm going to open up the size controls and just bring that down. So going over into our background here, I'm going to go over into image and uncheck auto resolution and I'm going to make it 1920 by 1920. And then I'm just going to increase the size of our ball here. So then we're left with something that looks like this. 
we're going to go ahead and add glow to this. Now, if you've used a 3D space before in DaVinci, you'll know that if I just go ahead and add Dream Glow, you know that you can't connect the input to your glow like this. So we're actually going to go ahead and render this out. And then we're going to go ahead and actually merge this onto a background and just decrease the alpha like so. And then now we can go ahead and pipe this into our Dream Glow. And then when I view the Dream Glow, we get this. Obviously, this is too strong, so we're going to go ahead and change the settings in a Dream Glow. Also, I'm going to leave a link in the description for you to go and get this Dream Glow. I feel like this is the best glow inside of DaVinci right now. All right, first of all, we're going to increase our high scale. Something like this will be fine. We're going to bring down our exposure. We're also going to bring down our radius quite a bit. We're going to do the same thing to our softness, but then we're going to increase our saturation to pretty much all the way. All right, now that's done, I'm going to go ahead and just deselect this for playback purposes. All right, I'm going to go ahead and actually group these now. And then I'm going to move on to making our grid background. All right, I'm going to bring in another background here, hitting shift space and just typing in grid. I'm going to view our grid and go over into our grid settings. I'm going to decrease our line space all the way. We're going to change both our line widths to 0.002. I'm going to change our row cells here to 17 and then our column cells here to 25. And then zooming in, selecting our white here, I'm going to bring it down like so. And then I'm actually going to go ahead now and do the opposite for our black here. All right, we're going to go ahead now and merge these inside of the 3D space. So I'm going to go ahead and bring in a image plane and do the same for this one over here and then merge them, adding a renderer and then, of course, our camera and then viewing this inside of 3D space. OK, so as far as our grid scale goes, we're going to scale this quite a lot. So clicking transform here, I'm going to change this to eight. So that brings it up by quite a bit. I'm also going to pull this back by quite a lot as well. Uh, something like this will do. All right, we're going to go ahead and lay the foundations of our animation here. So I'm actually going to pull the camera back a bit. Something like here will do. I'm actually going to go ahead and set a keyframe here on the bottom and then going to the very first frame and setting another keyframe and scaling that in. All right, opening our camera spline here. I'm just going to go ahead and adjust the graph. I'm just going to go ahead and pull this all the way this out as well and then just angle it like this so when viewed we should get something that looks like this all right i'm gonna go ahead and actually add another transform here and we're gonna use that for our angle so going back to the beginning i'm gonna add a keyframe on our rotation here and then going just a little past our animation somewhere like here i'm gonna go ahead and place a keyframe like so going back to our first one i'm gonna angle it like so and we're gonna do the exact same here for our animation I'm gonna go ahead and pull this all the way so then we'll go ahead and play we get something that looks like this nice and smooth it's gonna go ahead and actually change our camera here I'm gonna pull this forward just a tiny bit all right that looks good to me I'm gonna go ahead selecting our transform here and just type in another transform and add that into our timeline as you can see the anchor point for the transform here has been placed in the middle which is exactly what we want because we're going to keyframe our y rotation we're going to go ahead in the beginning and place a keyframe on our y rotation like so and i'm going to angle it here so it's facing over something like here will do and then going back into our last keyframe here and then going all the way forward and placing another keyframe i'm just going to angle it so it's facing the other direction something like that will do all right, so when we view our animation, we get something that looks like this. I did go ahead and tweak our graph ever so slightly. I made the camera start out a little bit more zoomed and I increased the scale here of our rotation. Okay, so viewing our 3D space here, I'm gonna make the background a lot more dramatic by angling it on the Y axis like so. Angle that by quite a lot. And as you can see here at the end, it's going and clipping. So what we're gonna go ahead and do is we're just gonna move that by quite a bit as well. So when we deselect here and just play this through, you can see that the background is a lot more dramatic. And we're going to go ahead now and make the circles that highlight areas on the map. All right, pulling in a background here and just viewing our background. I'm going to change this to red here. And then I'm going to pull in an ellipse and deselect solid and then increase the border width like so. All right, once we're happy with our border width, we're going to go and actually animate it. We're going to go ahead and actually connect the width and the height together so we don't have to scale them separately. We're going to do that by adding an expression. So right clicking here and just clicking expression or you could just type in the equal sign and it'll pull up the expressions. And then we can go ahead and drag this and link this to our height. So then when we use our height control, it scales both of them. So going over into our 10th keyframe here, I'm going to place a keyframe and then in the 34th 
keyframe, I'm going to place another keyframe there. I'm just going to scale this up here. And then going back into our 10th keyframe, it's going to scale that all the way down. Opening up our spline graph here, it's going to go ahead and edit this. I'm going to pull this up. And we should go ahead and have something like this. So we're going to go ahead now and actually add a duplicate and then offset the keyframes so it appears just after our animation. All right, hitting shift space, I'm going to type in duplicate node and then just add that in. And all we're going to do is change the time offset to minus three. So then we view our duplicate. We get something that looks like this. Nice. Clicking our ellipse here, we're going to make it fade out. Or just before our animation finishes scaling up, I'm going to place a keyframe here on level. And then going into frame 55 here, I'm going to go ahead and place another one. I'm just going to scale that down all the way to zero. And then in our first keyframe here for our level, I'm just going to decrease this. So it's just a little bit see-through. I think that's good to me. We're going to go ahead here and extend our group. And then I'm just going to go ahead and merge this on top of our group here. And as you can tell, this is way bigger than it needs to. So we're going to go ahead and add a transform after the duplicate. Viewing this merge here, I'm just going to go ahead and resize this. Okay, I think something like that looks good to me. Deselecting our merge here and just going ahead and viewing this. We get something that looks like this. We're going to go ahead now and just move this over. I'm going to duplicate this by copying and pasting. And then I'm just going to go ahead and paste it right next to it and view this merge think there is good. Whilst I'm here, I'm actually going to go ahead and increase the size of our border width here. Something like that looks, I think, a little bit better. And I'm just going to go ahead and copy this into our second. Okay, whilst I'm here, I'm going to explain why we don't just go ahead and scale down with this transform. As you can see, it's scaled down, but our border width has changed. We want it to scale down, but still have the same border width. So just going backspace, I'm going to go ahead and go into our keyframe that we made here on the height and just changing that. So it's a little bit smaller. So when we scale this down, you can see that the border width still remains the same. Okay. Once you're happy with your positioning, I think that looks all right to me. I'm going to go ahead and select our ellipse here, selecting all of our clip here by just clicking control A and then holding alt and dragging across. I'm just going to go ahead and position this where I want it to be. Yeah, I'm happy with that. All right, just go ahead and repeat these steps for the last two circles. All right, once you've gone ahead and pasted it, and let's say you are unhappy with the spacing here, with the time offset of our second duplication, you can actually go ahead and delete all of these and then make an instance of this and then going and hitting Control Shift V on all of them. So then now when we make a change, so let's say we go 0.5 instead, when we view the instances, we can see that it's changed for all of them. I'm actually going to changes back then to minus three. All right, so once we've gone ahead and added everything and we're happy with the way things look, we're gonna go ahead now and actually add our text. All right, so we're gonna go ahead now and pull in a background. I'm gonna make this alpha all the way down. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and paste in my text here. And my text is just the word Japan written out. With these settings here, we have basement go text for our font. I'll leave a link in the description to go ahead and download this font. And then I went into transform and tweak the size. If I just go ahead and just increase our Y value, you can see that goes up. I'm just gonna reset that. I'm actually gonna go ahead now and go over into our group here and copy this, paste it here. And I'm just gonna go ahead and merge this on top like so, and then merge this here. All right, so the way this works is we're gonna go ahead and actually add parallax to these texts by bringing them further forward in our 3D space. So I'm just gonna go ahead and copy this and paste this here. Okay, after I've changed the word from tournament, I'm gonna go ahead and actually just move this down like so. I'm actually gonna go ahead and actually change the size here. I'm just gonna go ahead and move this across as well. So the reason why I went ahead and pasted this group here, so we can get a rough idea of where our map is gonna be. So once we're happy with that, I'm just gonna go ahead and unselect this. I'm gonna go ahead back and split our viewer again. I'm gonna go ahead and copy our image plane here and just paste it over. I'm actually gonna go ahead and move this just for more space as well. And then select this into our image plane. Again, so when we add, we get something that looks like this. But we want a lot of parallax on this. So we're just going to go ahead and select our image plane. Just move this further into the camera's field of view. And then I'm actually just going to go ahead and move this over like so. Okay, so now we really get to tweak and play around with our positioning. If I pull this in here, I'm going to go ahead and select our Japan. And just pull that down a little bit. And then with our tournament here, I'm going to bring that all the way. Somewhere like this will do. So I'm actually going to go ahead now and add another transform. And this transform is just going to serve for the purpose of repositioning our camera. So I'm just going to position this further over here like so. So then now we can go ahead and tweak our positioning of our text here. Again, I'm just going to pull in this closer. And then I'm actually also going to decrease the size of this just so it fits again. And I'm going to reposition this. And then going back into our camera here, I'm going to position this like so. So then now I'm actually going to go ahead and increase 
the size of this again i think something like that looks good all right so far right on effect i couldn't get the exact effect used in the video the closest i could get is going over into modifiers here and then clicking the text scramble going over into modifiers and changing the scramble and then keyframing the scramble but the thing is it scrambles the whole of the text instead of just the last character as it's writing on so we're going to go ahead and leave that if anyone actually has a solution for this go ahead and comment it and i'll probably make an update video updating the technique but for now we're just gonna make the write on effect by placing a keyframe here on the 12th keyframe and then going over into frame 25 here placing another keyframe going back to our original and then just scaling this down so then when we view it, we have a nice little write on effect. All right, I'm going to go ahead and duplicate the same effect, but for our text here. OK, so once you're happy with this, you can go ahead and do the same thing for the second set of text here. I'm actually going to go ahead here and copy the image plane from our original map. And then I'm just going to go ahead and pipe that in and view this in the media out and then 3D space. So we're getting pretty close to the end here. I'm actually going to go ahead now and add parallax to this by moving this forward ever so slightly like so we're going to go ahead here and make the final steps which is the glow so copying our dream glow i'm going to go ahead and paste it here and connect this over and then just unselect our dream glow i'm going to enable the tint here and then change this to a yellowish color and i'm just going to desaturate it I'm going to go ahead and decrease the softness and whilst I'm at it, I'm going to copy and make an instance of this by hitting control shift and V and then pasting this here to our second text. I'm also going to decrease the blur size. I'm actually going to go ahead and do one last thing and change the camera animation again. I'm just going to go ahead and pull this out on the last keyframe so we see a lot more of our image here and then going back. I'm going to go ahead and reposition it. And with everything done, we should get something that looks like this. Make sure to like, subscribe and comment your thoughts down below and I'll see you in the next video.